um, webinar for University of Florida, and we're very, very excited that you're all here today. We have a great show for you. We have over 20 panelists here from University of Florida to talk to you about every aspect of our university and campus life. We have many graduate staff who are the experts for admission, which all of you have been waiting on. Some of you have already been admitted. And we have a lot of our current master's and PhD students as well. So the next 90 minutes is your opportunity to learn a lot more about our campus. And we encourage you to ask all of those questions that you have. For today's program, we have a couple of different audiences. This program is mainly focused on international students. And when I looked at the registrations, we really have students from lots and lots of countries across the globe. We also have some international students that are currently residing at a different university in the US uh, and they're attending the program today. So some of the people that are um, on our presentation today, some of you have already applied. You've applied for the spring term or you've applied for the fall term. Some of you that have applied for the spring term have already been admitted. Some of you are still waiting. And then we have many of you today that are prospects. You know that you're going to apply for next fall or you're hearing more about what we have to say to decide if you want to apply to one of our master's or PhD programs. So thank you for attending. I know your time is valuable and you have um, a lot of schools that you're looking at, many of you. So we're glad that the University of Florida is on your radar and we're one of the ones that you're considering. So we have, uh, we're gonna start off with introductions today. So let me share my slides here. Okay, can everybody see those okay? Dallas, you see those all right? Okay, good. Okay, so um, if you have not uh, filled out one of these forms, then please do so. If you've already applied, then you don't need to worry about it. This is where we know that you're interested in Florida. If you've registered, many of you have already done this, but if you've not done this, then please do that. These slides are already posted on the website, so you don't feel like you have to write everything down that we're going over today. They're in the same place where you registered for the webinar and the recording, we are recording this, that will be up uh, by tomorrow or early next week. And also all of the other webinars are up there as well. So um, first off, I'm gonna let Dallas introduce herself. For some reason we missed her picture on here. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you all. Nice to see all of my panelists in here today. It was nice meeting you all this past week. My name is Dallas Betterson. I am the program coordinator for the graduate recruitment program here at the Herbert Wertheim College of Engineering. I'm so happy to have you here with us this morning and go Gators. Yes, and a special thanks to Dallas. She's the ones that arranged this whole webinar and got all of you invited and on this program today. Uh, next up uh, would be my boss, which is Toshi Nishida. Unfortunately, he's not able to be here. He has another uh, appointment at this exact same time. He is the Associate Dean for Academic Affairs. So he oversees all of the graduate student cohorts, so all of the new graduate students that come in, the master's students, the PhD students across all departments. He is also a professor, a senior professor in our electrical and computer engineering department. So my name is Mike Nazareth. Um, many of you have heard from me before. You've received a lot of messaging from me. Um, when you sign up for things, you've received application and fee waivers from me, or you've requested those, et cetera. And some of you um, have been looking at UF for a year or two. Others, uh, maybe very recently, you only just heard about us and we piqued your interest in the last couple of weeks. So you'll hear from me more throughout this year as we work to bring in the fall 2025 and spring 2025 new graduate students. All right, I will go next. Welcome everyone. My name is Krista Smith. I am the Assistant Director for Graduate Recruiting and Undergrad Research at the College of Engineering at the University of Florida. So glad to have you today and hopefully um, you'll learn a lot about UF today. Martine here. Martine, you're up next. I apologize. I was looking for the unmute. Hello, everyone. My name is Martine Angren. I am director of F1 International Student Services, and I've been working here for about 20 years with a team of about eight advisors 
who you will work with if you are admitted to UF or have been admitted to UF for your I-20 and maintaining status here as an F1. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ade, and I am the graduate academic advisor for the biomedical engineering program here at UF. Um, if you have any questions, um, concerns, feel free to reach out to me. Be happy to answer all your questions. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Christina Sapp, and I work for the CISE department and did the admissions. So if you haven't received the spring letter, I'm actually working on them as we are doing this webinar and we'll be getting them to you today. So be looking forward to that. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Julissa Nunez. I'm the graduate admissions officer for the electrical and computer engineering department. So I'll be here to answer any ECE related admissions questions. Hello, my name is Paula Johns. I'm the academic program specialist for SE, which has the civil, coastal, and environmental engineering sciences program. I work primarily with admissions, and you are welcome to reach out at gradinfo at se.ufl.edu with any questions. Hi, I'm Pam Simon. I work with engineering education. I mostly handle the admissions for our programs. Um, if you have any questions at any time, please feel free to reach out to me. Hi, everybody. My name is Brittany Guerriere. I'm the admissions advisor for the graduate program for mechanical and aerospace engineering. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to me at gradadmissions at mae.ufl.edu. And you can also request a virtual meeting um, through that email as well. Lovely to meet you all. Hey everyone, my name is Tahira Franklin. I'm one of the academic advisors for the Department of Material Science and Engineering in the Nuclear Engineering Program. Um, unfortunately, Allison Beatty is not able to make it today. Um, but if you have any questions, we both handle general advising um, as well as admission processing. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Okay, that's our expert crew, our graduate staff that will handle all of your official admissions. And now we'd like to have our current students introduce themselves. Good morning, Krishna. guys. I'm Krishna Prasad. I am a PhD student in the mechanical and aerospace engineering. So please direct any questions if you have any doubts about the doctoral program in the MA department. Hey all, welcome to UF. Uh, this is Bhumija Balaji. I'm doing my master's in computer science and I've just joined UF for the fall 2024. You can pin me or reach out to me if you have any doubts regarding CISC department. Yeah. Welcome to UF again. Hello, this is Shushangita Magdam from master's in chemical engineering. Welcome to the UF and you can ask me any questions if you have uh, regarding chemical engineering at UF. Uh, hello everyone, uh, this is Sindhula here. Uh, welcome to UF and I am current fall 2024 CS grad student. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Uttra Madhavan. I'm currently pursuing my master's in electrical and computer engineering. I'm also a fall 2024 intake. So if you have any questions related to electrical and computer department, you can reach out to me. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Vernon Krasto. Uh, I'm a third year PhD student in electrical and computer engineering. Uh, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Hi everyone, my name is Kaylee Cunningham. I am a PhD student in the material science and engineering program, um, but I'm in kind of a unique situation where I did my undergraduate degree in nuclear engineering at UF. Um, I actually went to MIT to get a master's degree in nuclear engineering and then decided to come back to UF for my PhD. So I would love to talk about my experience, why I made that transition and answer any questions you may have about 
University of Florida in general, or the material science or nuclear engineering program. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Adriana, but you can call me Audrey. I'm a fourth year PhD student in the biomedical engineering program. So I've been here for a while, so I would love to answer any questions about UF or the biomedical engineering program in general. Hey everyone, my name is Rohit and I'm a first year master's student in the industrial and systems engineering department, ISC. And I'm new to UF as well. I've come this fall, fall 2024, and I would love to help you out with any questions you might have. Okay, thank you, Rohit. Uh, so you see, I wasn't lying. We absolutely have a team of experts here today. In fact, in the this is the start of the 11th he year here for me working at University of Florida. And I think we have the most panelists of all the webinars we've done over the years with 20. So um, I know you have a lot of questions and the instructions that I provide for all of our panelists, staff and students are very simple. Tell our prospective students and applicants whatever they want to hear. So tell them the good things about Florida and the things that uh, maybe we need to improve on. So whatever questions you have, they will answer. So what we're going to do at this time, uh, first, we have one question for you. So Dallas, could you put up our poll question? This is the only question we're going to ask of you. And this question is very simple about your status for towards the University of Florida. Have you already applied? You will be applying. You're thinking about applying, depending on you know, how this session goes today, what you continue to learn about University of Florida, or you've crossed us off your list. And hopefully that is zero for that one. Um, OK, so we'll let this poll be up for a little bit. And then Dallas, feel free to take that down when you feel um, most people have answered that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open up the Q&A. So for the questions and answers, we want to make the best use of everybody's time. So you can start asking questions now and any of our panelists can chime in and answer your question. But when you ask a question, please address it to either a specific person by name or by department. So if you're looking at electrical and computer engineering, you could put ECE and then your question, and then our staff and our students will know who to answer. Or if it's computer science, you can put CS or et cetera. If you have a more general question where would you, you would like several of our students and staff to answer, then you could just put a general question like something about housing or living in Gainesville, et cetera. So you can go ahead and start that now. Feel free to start asking your questions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to continue with a series of slides, and there will be three speakers today. We're going to go over a lot of good content for you, especially since you're coming from around the globe, and most likely most of you have not been to the U.S. or to Gainesville, so we can help you to understand more. And then I will call on some of our staff and our students throughout so they can, they can talk about it in more detail. At the end of the slides, then we'll save some time, 10 or 15 minutes, to go over more questions for questions that were answered quite frequently. So the Q&A is open. Um, go ahead and, and have at it. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is just University of Florida in general. So we have been around a long time, more than 120 years since 1853. The University of Florida campus is quite old. It is one of the largest public universities in the entire United States of America. We have almost 61,000 students. That's a tremendous amount of students, probably one of the top five or top three universities in the United States for the number of students that have enrolled. But we're not just about undergraduate students. We have a very healthy portion of graduate students here. You can see almost one third of our campus, almost 20,000 students are graduate students. So what that means for you is a big part and a big focus of what we do is paying attention to you, paying attention to our master students and paying attention to our PhD students. We're very large, 2,000 acres. It's probably like a 10 by 10 blocks all filled in with campus buildings, with walkways, with places to eat, social events, football fields, other sporting events, student rec areas, uh, businesses in town all contained within. So it's really quite a lovely place. 
Uh, we have a lot of PhD students and a lot of master's students, probably a three-fourths to one-fourths for master's to PhD. In some colleges, it's a two-thirds to one-third. We have a lot of faculty, and we spend a lot of money on research. And for those of you that are prospective research uh, PhD students, you will be working in a lab and doing research. For those of you that are master's students, you could be doing research, or you may want to do a lot more of it if you want to consider staying for the PhD. And those annual research expenditures, that's what pays for the stipends and the funding for our PhD students. So that's very important that we have a large amount of that. So we're not just about a whole university, we're also about engineering. And that's very important to us here. We are the Herbert Wertheim College of Engineering. You've seen that in our messaging. Um, Herbert Wertheim is a famous alumni and he donated a large significant amount of money uh, almost 10 years ago, and that's when we renamed the college to Herbert Wertheim. I believe he got one of his degrees in electrical and computer engineering, and he actually has many patents, over 100, and is very famous for the technology uh, for your shades, for your eyeglasses, that when you go outside and they shade down, uh, he's the one that invented that technology. So uh, that's why you see the word Herbert Wertheim. We're a very large college. We are over 11,000 students. So if you come to the University of Florida, do know that there will be many students like you. And here on our campus and in our college, we also include all of the areas of computing. I know many universities around the country, it's a separate college for computer science, for data science, for um, artificial intelligence, for cybersecurity. All of these areas are incorporated within our College of Engineering, so we're all encompassing. We have a lot of graduate students, over 3,000, and we're the two-thirds, one-third split for the master's PhD. And you will not just be working with students in your own area. We have a lot of cross collaboration across college, across departments. You can see we have virtually every area of engineering and computing here. Uh, petroleum engineering may be one that you don't see up there, but we do have facets of that in our chemical engineering department and our environmental engineering science department. Probably some of that lies in material science and engineering, et cetera. So we offer master's and PhD in all of these, and the ones with parentheses at the end would be exclusive to that degree. And we have students that apply to multiple degrees. So we have some students that are very interested in one area and they just apply for a master's in that or a PhD in that. But we have students that might apply for two degrees for say next fall. And then if they get admitted to both, it doubles your chances of admission. Then you select which one you want or perhaps a student gets admitted to one and not the other. So that is an option for you. Um, many of you have received our application fee waivers and those codes would be good to apply to multiple um, degrees if you have a, a lot of interest in two or three areas. We hear about rankings all of the time. And so my advice to all of you as prospective students is do pay attention to them. It is good for an institution you're considering to be among the best, among uh, the top. But there are a lot of rankings now, uh, way more than when I went through college if you go back to the prehistoric time era of 1992 when I graduated, there was only two or maybe three rankings, but now there are many, many. So what I like to show is this slide shows that we rank among very well among many of these rankings. You will see we're in the top five to the top 10 of many prestigious rankings, some prestigious for high quality academics. So you receive a good product for your money and your time and your education. Some ranked very well for how economical we are, for um, very economical tuition and very economical place to live in Gainesville. So we rank well among these, and you can also see these are all very recent. Most of these are 2023 or 24. One just came out two weeks ago um, in 2025. Uh, so we're proud of that, and this is something that we work hard at here at University of Florida. We have a lot of buildings. Um, if you go on our ufl.edu is our main website, and uh, I forget the, uh, the URL for our campus maps, but if you search campus maps, there'll be a map that pops up and it will show hundreds and hundreds of buildings. So there's so many things here. You can be here in your second year and find new buildings that you didn't realize existed in your first year, same in your third, fourth, and even fifth year. 
And of these hundreds of buildings, more than 60 are for engineering and computing and, and some are brand new. So we do have great infrastructure. We do have great facilities. We have some of the most modern and state-of-the-art facilities that have just opened. And all of this is open to all of our graduate students here at University of Florida. One of our newer buildings that opened just in the last three years, um, going along with the large donation and renaming the college, Herbert Wertheim also has his building named, which is the Laboratory for Engineering Excellence. And this is kind of what we view as the new model of buildings uh, for campus here at University of Florida. So this building would not just be one major or for just one department or set of students, but it can be all encompassing. So this building has spaces for undergrad and grad students. This building has classroom spaces and lab spaces. This building has research that takes place as well as student teams or student experience, student project areas. This building has offices for faculty. This building has offices for graduate staff. So really a mix of all areas. So it, we can be very collaborative here at University of Florida. Um, so students are not just pigeonholed in their own area. You will certainly spend a lot of your time doing that for your specialty that you want your graduate degree in, but you'll have opportunity broader than that to work with um, other students and other faculty across departments. The latest building that absolutely everybody here on our whole, whole campus is so excited about, this is the most state-of-the-art technological building probably at any university in the entire country because it only opened uh, in fall of 2023, so a year ago, but really we didn't start hosting any classes in it until last January and spring of 24. So it's brand new, there's areas in it that are still being polished off. It's uh, many stories, I think seven stories. The home of electrical and computer engineering department moved into this building. The home of our computer and information sciences and engineering department moved into this building. There's a floor for our College of Pharmacy, for our College of Medicine, and several other disciplines on our campus. So we're very happy to have this. It's very modern, and it's for a big part of what we're trying to do as we embed artificial intelligence going forward. So we also have an alumni who was uh, the founder and CEO of NVIDIA. And so he gave a large donation to University of Florida and that helped to build the Malakowski Hall for Data Science and Information Technology. But we've always had a, a supercomputer here, the Hypergator. And a supercomputer is used by all graduate students, especially the PhD students, for their projects, for their research, for high stakes computing, um, data analysis, et cetera. And his donation allowed our supercomputer to be even more modernized and probably one of the most outstanding in all of higher education in the United States. And this only just happened in the last year and our graduate students have access to this. And so we know how important computing is and UF is trying to embed AI in every graduate major across the whole campus, not just in engineering, but in medicine and liberal arts, et cetera. And so you will definitely be involved with that. And I know some of you are already involved with that in your undergraduate studies. So we're glad that you're looking more um, at University of Florida and we're known for a lot of areas as well, distinguished faculty, members of the National Academy of Engineering, which for faculty in the United States is the highest accolade you can receive as a faculty member. And we have many of those that are current faculty here. We have lots of alumni worldwide, more than 60,000, and we're adding to that every semester when mo more cohorts of students graduate. We have lots of innovation. If you're interested in engineering along with some um, innovation, tech transfer, entrepreneurship, leadership, we offer certificates in all those. It's three short courses. Those courses can count towards your master's or PhD degree. And then you also get that added towards your degree from UF and uh, on your resume and your transcripts, et cetera. So if you have interest in those areas, then we can assist you with that as well. We have a great culture and all of you, more than uh, 120 students online today um, are a perfect example of that. We have students here from around the globe. We have students from many, many countries. 
uh, when Martine speaks here in a few minutes, she can probably attest to the exact or estimated number of countries from across the globe. We have students here from across the US, not just state of Florida, but many of the 50 states. We have very diverse students. We're among the leaders in the US for women that achieve their PhD degrees. We have a lot of underrepresented minority students and the Hispanic and African-American students. And we're very proud of having a culturally diverse student body. You will also see that in some of our staff and some of our faculty that teach the courses here as well. Okay, so I've talked a little bit here, and since almost all of you online are international students, it was very, very appropriate to have our international center here today because there's a lot of uh, the latest updates you need to know. So I will pass it over uh, now to Martine. Hello again, everybody. Again, my name is Martine. So thank you, uh, the engineering team, Matt and all, I'm sorry, Mike and all for having me here. And I hope to see a lot of you soon in the semester of your admission. Next slide. So there is a lot of information that you'll need to know about being an F1 student here in the United States. Since right now, the primary questions are going to be about I-20. We are going to focus on that. And you will definitely want to make sure that you scan the QR code in order to get detailed information about all of these processes and all information that will be relevant for you to one, apply for your I-20, secure your visa appointment, enter the US, check in, register correctly, and then hopefully enjoy both your academic and overall living experience here in the US. Next slide. So if you are admitted to the university for a semester in 2025, graduate students are required to show proof of funds in the amount of 57,555 per academic year. You are only required to show the first year in order to apply for your I-20, but then of course you are expected to be able to maintain your enrollment expenses for the duration of your program. If you are provided the Achievement Award, you will only need to show proof of funds in the amount of 53,055 USD. These numbers are subject to change, but there's no indication that these will change for the 2025 year. If you are otherwise admitted to 2026, these numbers may change. So the I-20 process, some of you perhaps already been admitted, already started applying for your I-20, awesome. If you haven't, um, either we haven't received a request for your I-20 yet because you haven't been admitted or you were just admitted and your department is working very hard to get all that through. Once you get the email for the instructions with the instructions for your application process, you'll be able to log into our IEEE portal with the same GatorLink credentials. So make sure that you also set up your GatorLink um, after your admission. Once you log in with your credentials, you'll see all of the instructions. So again, your department will submit the request to us to let us know you're admitted. They'll let us know if you have the achievement award, which I do believe just about everyone receives. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, then you'll be able to do your application. So again, we'll send it to the same email address that you use to apply to UF. So make sure that you're checking your inbox, spam, junk mail for those instructions. Um, once you submit your application, and you do need to make sure you scroll to the top and hit submit application, your application will be in queue. I emphasize that because every questionnaire has its own save submit option. Save allows you to go back in and make modifications if you need to. Submitting that specific questionnaire locks it, so make sure you're ready to actually submit that, that um, questionnaire. And then after you've done all questionnaires, uploaded all documents, then you scroll to the top and click submit application. Again, I'm emphasizing that because sometimes students forget that that's the final and needed submission to be in queue. So once that's in queue, your F1 advisor will uh, receive your application in the order in which it was received. We'll review it. If anything's wrong, they'll let you know. If everything's right, they'll issue the I-20. You'll receive an email that lets you know how to download the I-20 from the IEEE portal. Next slide. Once you have that I-20, you'll be able to pay your CBIS fee and then complete your DS-160, which is the visa application form with the US consulate office in your local area. The uh, DS-160 is both your application and securing the appointment. So then you'll be able to attend your visa appointment and interview for that. That's typically 60 seconds to two minutes. Just have your documents with you and answer your questions, um, the questions you're asked. Uh, based on, of course, factual information. 
Among other documents that you'll need to have with you for your visa appointment is in fact your I-20 from us, your admission letter from the department, and that's um, all, both of those I think are provided electronically. There's no need to have an original mail to you. And then of course you'll have your proof of funds and your passport um, and anything listed on the consulate website as needed for your interview. Then hopefully you get your visa approved, you schedule your flight and you enter the US. You can only enter the US a maximum 30 days prior to the start date of your program. So, excuse me, for those admitted to, uh, for example, spring that starts January 13th, uh, if you have all your documents and visa, you could enter as early as December 14th. Um, then once you enter, you are required to submit your check-in with UFIC. It is online, it's no longer in person, um, and that is required that you do that prior to the start of classes. And then of course, register full-time and we'll talk about registration requirements. To arrive in the United States, you need to have your I-20 admission letter, F-1 visa, passport, and your proof of funds on your person. Do not pack them in your luggage. Um, even scan them before you travel, just in case you lose anything, but you do have to have your originals in hand. Again, you can enter up to 30 days prior to the program start date on your I-20. Please keep in mind that a lot of affordable um, housing, whether on or off campus, they are leased most of the time through July 31st, December 31st. So you may not be able to move into your apartment until maybe the week prior, if that, um, to, of classes starting. So it can take some time. Um, next slide, please. So the check-in process is fully online. It must be completed prior to start of classes. It is only about 20 or 30 minutes and it's a, something that you would want to complete so that we can verify that you've arrived, you've provided your documents and we've confirmed that you're an F1. Now there are some dates that you need to be aware of. I did not necessarily list them here because it depends on the semester to which you're admitted. But if you scan that QR code and click on the semester to which you're admitted, you'll see what each deadline is. There are advanced and regular registrations and you won't have any late fees if you register at that time. Then there's first day of classes. You must be registered full time and in compliance for F1 status. The drop ad time frame is about three to five days after classes start, depends on semester of admission. If you're not registered prior to the first day of classes and if you're not registered full time by the end of classes, um, uh, by the end of the drop ad period, You'll have a late fee for late registration and you'll have an F1 status issue for not being registered in compliance. So we make it very easy for you to know what compliance registration requirements are right on our website. And we'll also talk about that. Next slide. Um, I'm Actually, let me say one more thing about uh, fees. A lot of students may sometimes say that they have um, funding that they're expecting to be transferred to their bank account or whatnot. I do wanna emphasize while the university wants you to pay all your tuition in full prior to when it's due, and you also want to do that so that you don't have a late fee, if for some reason you don't have all the funds to pay prior to the fee payment deadline, pay something. As long as you pay any nominal amount prior to that deadline, your classes won't be canceled. If you pay nothing, your classes will be canceled, and that will be a status issue. So we just want to make sure to say that part. Next slide. All right, so full-time registration for graduate student starting in the fall or spring semesters is nine credits each semester. This includes your ability to take up to three credits 100% online. Your other six credits must be in-person, physical presence, or hybrid, um, but you are required to attend a physical presence full-time degree program to maintain your F1 status. Employment, I know a lot of our students want to know, can they work and how soon can they work? You are allowed to work on the university that campus that issued you the I-20. So in this case, that would be UF. We have a community or a state college nearby. You cannot work on that campus. But if UF issues you, issues you the I-20, you are allowed to work on our campus for UF. And you are allowed to work up to 20 hours per week on, um, on our campus. You cannot work on, off campus at all in the first academic year. If you're eligible for work authorization after you've completed one full academic year in valid F1 status, then you would be able to apply for CPT, which is curricular practical training, 
to work off campus. And mind you, work includes, but is not limited to anything that the government may consider as training, internship, externship, practicum, co-op, required or optional, paid or unpaid. So please be careful with that as we don't want you to fall out of status. Then when you complete your program and graduate, you'll be able to get what's called OPT, optional practical training to work after graduation. Um, we have workshops throughout the year to help you understand what CPT and OPT are. And we typically hold those workshops in January and early February or otherwise in September, depending on your semester of admission. Next slide. Every single student has an F1 advisor. Each advisor has an average of 800 to 1,000 students per advisor. Um, uh, earlier, Michael Nazareth in, in indicated that I could let you know about how many students from what countries. We do have just about 6,500 international students on the F1 visa from around 135 countries. So we are working with about 4,500 currently enrolled students and around 1,800 or so students on the OPT or STEM OPT. So if you think about those numbers, eight advisors working with around 6,000, 6,500 students, we've got quite the many students to help. And we're so very glad that so many students choose UF and we hope that you do too. So to reiterate, you can always contact your F1 advisor if you have any questions and then make sure that you also apply for your I-20 and importantly, click on submit application so that your application will be in queue. I think that's all I've got for you today and hopefully you choose UF and we can see you in our semester. Okay, thank you so much, Martine. Okay, I can see lots and lots of questions, 50 or 60 questions are out there and our crack panelists are answering away. So continue to ask all your questions, be sure to address them to a person or a specific department. So um, our crack panelists know um, for whom to answer. So I'm gonna just talk about uh, a little bit about our master's program and I'm gonna call on some of our current master's student panelists and department staff. And then I'm going to turn uh, the speaking time over to Krista to go over PhD and many other topics. So I know quite a few of you are considering a master's degree here at um, University of Florida. So this is the exact numbers. So for fall 2024, we had over 4,200 students apply to master's degrees across our entire college. You can see 55% were admitted and we have 680 students enrolling. The GPAs vary greatly. Many of you are international, so we have to equate those to the US GPA system on the 4.0 scale. Roughly a B average or better, 80% uh, average or better, a 3.0 or better, many different scales, but that's some of kind of the general for students uh, to be admitted. The GRE is waived for every single master's degree in our entire college except for computer science in our CISE department. So these numbers for the last five years have been pretty stable. I've seen anywhere between 4,000 and 5,500 applications. I've seen the percentage of admits be anywhere from 45 to 55 percent. I've never seen more than 60 percent admitted, so it's, it would be no more than at some point in the 50s. And I've seen anywhere from 30 to 35% of those admitted that enroll. Um, so we have room for more than 680 master's students. Um, some years, one year we had 950 new master's students and one year we had uh, maybe 500 or so. So we don't set a number. It's really ba based on the quality of the applications we receive. And then some students never complete their application. So make sure you complete your application. There are some students we'd like to admit, but they don't complete all the portions, so we're unable to fully admit them. So don't let that, that happen to you. Um, if you've not already applied, if you're not in the spring batch, if you're in the fall batch, we're looking for January 5th. That's the priority application deadline. The application will not turn off at that point. It'll keep going, but faculty do like to review students that have turned those in on time. Some departments will accept them later, but that means it's going to take later for you to hear. If we don't get your application till mid or late January, don't expect to hear back till late March because there are thousands of apps ahead of you. So 
I would turn it in before January 5th. I wouldn't be skating all the way up to the end. You can see some of the other requirements there with letters of recommendation. Most departments at three. I know mechanical and aerospace is two. Statement of purpose, et cetera. Most departments can use your unofficial transcripts in order to make the admission decision. And then for those that are admitted, of course, you'd have to submit the official transcript before you enroll on campus. So that can make things a little easier for you. There are requirements that vary by department. So please check those. What I'd like to do now is let me call on uh, one of our students. So um, I'm going to call on Uthra from ECE. You are a new master's student here. So would you just like to talk for a minute? Um, what's Florida like? Did it meet your expectations versus when you were looking and deciding where to apply now that you're here? Uh, hey, hi, I'm uh, really very much excited to join uh, at the electrical and computer engineering department. Uh, initially, I was feeling uh, a bit anxious, like how things turn around here at the UF. And here, uh, Gainesville and UF is like a home away from home for me. And I'm really settled now here. And I'm re really happy to be a part of UF. So here in electrical and computer engineering, uh, we have uh, very good research and uh, um, other uh, things going on here and we have very good uh, power electronics research labs and uh, there is one another uh, semiconductor fabrication lab also for us for uh, exploring semiconductor fabrication and uh, etching and all those things so I'm really excited and still want to explore more at Gainesville that's what I was thinking okay good thank you and you just got here so you'll have plenty of time to do that and explore more how about we move to Rohit? Rohit is a master's student in industrial systems engineering. How do you like it here? How do you like the program? Is there advice you have for prospects as they're considering applying masters? Yeah, hey, so everyone, um, funnily enough, last year, same time, um, I was in a webinar just like the one that we're having now. Um, <laughs> UF has exceeded expectations, to be honest. Um, the amount of research, the quality of education, the insane support I get from my department is like really, really something that I was, you know, looking forward to. Um, it's it's all really awesome here. Um, the climate is very mm, similar to where I come from. Uh, it's a bit hot sometimes in the summer. It's very cold right now, <laughs> but yeah. Um, it has been an awesome time so far. I'm looking forward to exploring more of Gainesville, more of Florida, and also learning more about my program. Okay, great. Thank you, Rohit. I'd like to call on uh, one of our graduate staff, Pam Simon. So she's in our engineering education department. And this time of year, um, we have two new master's degrees in that area. I'll let Pam explain them, but they're getting a tremendous amount of interest. And so we can go over that or anything else for prospective master's students, Pam. Hi, everyone. Um, we do have two new master's programs that start at this current fall 2024. Um, our intakes are only in the fall semesters, but we have the applied data science and artificial intelligence systems. If you have any questions about either of those, please reach out to me. Okay, so those are two new programs we started this fall, and I know their enrollment, they're going to try to double that for next fall. This is also could be of great importance for those of you with computer science interest. You could be applying to computer science and to one of these programs to double your chances because there is a lot of overlap. I'd like to, let me do just another slide, and then I'm going to call on... With Jima from Computer Science, if she'd like to talk in just a second. So many of you, uh, if you have not received consideration for an application fee waiver, then please uh, fill out one of those forms that was on the opening slide. The link is here and it will also be on the closing slide. And these slides are posted on the website. We do have application fee waivers for all of our master's programs available except for computer science because that receives such a high volume that is just uh, not as feasible for us. 
Uh, some of these are automatic and some of you already received. Some we have to make decisions and not every student would receive one, but you would be considered. So we do have some of those uh, available. So let's call on uh, from computer science, uh, Bujima, if you, I'm sure I got that name wrong, please correct me when you're, uh, when you're up. If you could talk about your experience here as a new master's student. Sure, Mike, it's Bumija. Okay. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm liking Florida so much. And uh, uh, even I was a little skeptical while I was choosing this, but as Uttara said, it was uh, home away from home again. And uh, the weather is pretty the same from the place where I come from. So I, I feel really pretty comfortable here. And US, US has to offer a lot of resources when it comes to on campus. We have like about seven libraries uh, and many other uh, center of excellence and uh, research laboratories. And uh, the graduate staff are pretty cool and uh, very knowledgeable and easy to help too. And uh, the, the CISC track in the UF like has to offer two tracks, right? The one is thesis and the other one is non-thesis. So people have an option to choose what they want to want to specialize in, maybe in a PhD track or in or, or in a market or the industry way. Uh, so that also helps people to decide on what they want to do and uh, align their interests accordingly. So even I'm exploring the campus because I just joined UF for fall 2024. It's hardly been two to three months that I'm here, but I'm already loving it. Yeah, ex uh, interested in exploring more, yeah. Okay, great, thank you. So for those of you that are admitted, if you're admitted for the spring and you come, there'll be like some orientation and welcome events in early January. For those of you for next fall, we'll have admitted student uh, webinars just for master's students. Those will be in the spring. We'll have many more of our students on helping and assisting with housing, um, I-20s, all sorts of areas for needs uh, for those that are admitted and definitely want to come here. As far as master's degree funding, I'll just touch on that for a bit. Um, there's the on-campus studies, which is really about two years for most students, unless you are in UF undergrad and staying for master's. It's four semesters, 16 weeks each. Most do fall and spring, so uh, mid-August to early December, and then early January to late April. Most don't stay in the summer as they're looking for jobs. We have EDGE if you want online studies for master's, but that's just a couple of our programs, and some want to stay for the PhD. Most master students do pay their own way as the funding is reserved for PhD students, but we do offer the Academic Achievement Award $4,500, and that's guaranteed for all non-Florida residents, students from other states and from other countries. If you enroll, it doesn't matter the major, including computer science, everybody would get that. Um, so there are a few of our master students that successfully find a faculty mentor, do some research, and they can get funding in their second year, but most do pay their own way in the master studies. Okay, I've talked quite a bit. Um, the last thing I'm gonna talk about is the overall cost. So for tuition, Martin went over overall costs. It's about $30,000 a year for non-Florida residents. So for other countries and from other states, that's almost the same as it was when I came here 10 years ago. They rarely raise the tuition costs. If you're an in-state Florida resident, it's significantly cheaper. And then the cost of living in Gainesville, these charts show against uh, ranked against other top 10 public universities in the US as we are number one for most economical tuition and number one for most um, economical cost of living in the town. All right, we need to move on to PhD now. So for the next 25 or 30 minutes, uh, Krista will be going over this and other important areas. All righty, thanks, Mike. Peter off back there. Um, those of you who are interested in PhD degrees, um, just gonna go over a little bit of the time commitment involved because it is a significant time commitment and requires a lot of dedication. Um, if you, there's several ways, first of all, that you can start a PhD degree at the University of Florida, and that is somewhat dependent on the department you're applying to. Um, a lot of departments will allow you to apply directly from a bachelor's degree. And essentially, then you're getting a master's and a PhD because um, you're doing a couple years of coursework, most likely, and then finishing up the rest of it with research. And that takes in the ballpark of four to five years, four and a half to five years. 
if you are coming into the PhD program with a prior master's degree, which is possible in many of our departments, takes a little bit less time, right? Hopefully anyway, it kind of depends on your research and how that goes, but it should take a little bit less time. So three to four years. And we can allow some of your coursework, um, if not all, to be transferred from your master's degree. And your graduate advising uh, contact will handle most of this for you and work with you to do this, but there's a couple of ways that can be accomplished through a block transfer of all of your courses, or they may decide to do um, a review of all of your courses one by one to see which one would be uh, applicable for transfer. And if you are currently a UF student um, in a master's program, again, it should take a little bit less time for you, assuming that you are um, sticking with the same research area, um, even the same lab, you probably are getting quite a head start on finishing your degree. Oh, next slide. Okay, so this is some admission statistics, um, very similar to the master slide that Mike showed. Um, you can see here for this fall, we had a little over 2,000 applications, admitted about 20% of those. So it is quite a selective admissions process. And of those, 41% enrolled in our programs. GPA average um, normalized is 3.56 out of four. Um, check your departmental requirements. Um, many of you are international students, so these are the university's requirements for the TOEFL or IELTS, if that's required for you. Um, there are some countries that are exempt, so that you can find that on the UF International Center's website. Um, but your department may have different requirements. Um, so same goes for admission requirements. You always wanna check your department's website to see if they have more than what's required by the university. <clears throat> In terms of actually applying, uh, many of you sounds like have already applied, which is awesome. So you know this information already, but if you're still deciding, um, this will be a process that you'll go through. So you will apply to the Office of Admissions. You'll apply to the campus with an online application. Your department will determine the admission decision or make a recommendation to the admissions office for you to be admitted. Um, there's a few different decisions they can be made. Um, we talked about fee waivers. There are some international fee waivers offered for PhD applicants by departments. Um, I'll get to those details on the next slide, I think. Um, most importantly, you wanna know that December 5th is the priority deadline for applications. Um, the rest of those requirements there are pretty standard. Um, one difference from the master's program, all departments do not require the GRE. So, um, I've talked a little bit about that, kind of breeze through some requirements, but I think it'd be best to hear from some of our PhD students who have gone through this process. So I am gonna call on Krishna Prasad, if you wouldn't mind talking about your um, experience in applying to UF and your program thus far. Yep. Um, thank you, Krista. Um, I have been in Gainesville for around three and a half years, so I have explored almost everything that there is to offer around Gainesville and Florida. Um, so I came in as a master's student, but I converted to a PhD after the first six months. So the transition is not very difficult. There are a lot of good people working in the MAHR who will help you through the process. Um, as far as Gainesville and Florida are concerned, um, Gainesville is placed at a very good location when you think about it it's quaint and it's quaint but there are also a lot of things that you can do as a student and it's also pretty close to Orlando and Jacksonville and it's just a couple of hours away and if you want to explore there are a lot of things to do around Gainesville all right awesome thank you so much um Julissa you have your hand raised did you want to talk about your department's process I was going to call on you anyway so. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to emphasize what Krista was saying about checking the department's website. Um, if you have already applied, you'll notice things like 
the letters of recommendation are not required on the application, but all the departments require that. So you just want to make sure that you check the department's website so you know exactly what they um, require. And things like um, the transcripts, there's a, a field where you can upload transcripts, but it doesn't mention degree certificates. We require, the university requires the degree certificate as well. So you want to make sure that you upload those things just so it doesn't delay you later when um, when the review is going on at the Office of Admissions level. So just want to make sure that everyone um, makes sure to check the department's website so that you're not missing anything and so there's no delays in your application review. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, let's hear from one more staff member. Tahara, would you like to talk about MSE and your process? Sure, absolutely. Hi. <laughs> yes, so um, the information that they have on the screen is correct for us. Three letters of recommendation, statement of purpose, um, GRE is waived. Um, we do offer international PhD application fee waivers, um, but that is limited, so you'll have to apply for that if you go to our um, uh, MSC um, department website and you click on prospective students at the top of that page, you'll see the link for you to submit an application fee waiver, um, application for the fee waiver, and those decisions will go out around November 1st. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll go on to the next slide. So as I mentioned, um, this is more detailed information about who offers PhD application fee waivers, um, a reminder of the application deadline up there at the top. Um, there's contact information for the departments that do offer them um, and the links to the forms to apply for a waiver to be considered for one. Um, this is these are the same links that the QR code at the beginning and at the end of the presentation point to. So if you've already clicked those, you should be all set. Next slide. All right. So one of the main things probably on a lot of people's minds, especially um, PhD students, is how the funding works. And it's quite different from master's programs. So I will talk a little bit about this, but then I'm going to have students talk about this as well and some staff, because um, even within the college, there's a wide variation of how this works um, with different departments. So generally speaking, um, PhD students all receive assistantships that are um, four to five year awards, could be given to you in a variety of different ways. So we'll get into that in a little bit later, um, but they are renewable each year based on your student evaluation. Um, they provide a few benefits, one of them major one being a tuition waiver. So you will have to pay fees as a student per semester, but you should not have to pay tuition. You will also receive health insurance and other benefits um, that come with being basically an employee of the university. You're also a student, but you are considered a student employee. And UF's um, annual stipend is a minimum of 32K per year. And if you are coming in with a fellowship, um, the first bullet there mostly probably applies to domestic students, but um, there are opportunities for international students as well. If you have certain fellowships, um, we do provide additional funding to supplement those um, as an incentive for applying for those and receiving those. UF does have a couple of fellowships that are internal to the university, um, the McKnight Fellowship and a summer program called the Bridge to Doctorate. And if you have any questions about those, um, maybe the staff could speak to those or I would be happy to answer those. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about how offer letters work, um, and I'll let the staff talk about this as well, because like I said, it varies. Um, you may get an offer letter of admission first, and then you may get an offer letter later with the funding details attached. You may get an offer letter from another department um, that lists your advisor, or you may um, find an advisor later in your program. I know chemical engineering, um, you did not select an advisor in that department until late in the fall. 
but other departments, um, you match right away with a faculty member as a PhD student. So there's a wide variety there. Um, I'm gonna call on Audrey to talk about how BME um, works in the funding space. And if anything else you wanna talk about the BME program, that would be awesome. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was just answering some questions about this. So um, yes, what I did is I applied and then it's nice that once you send your application in, you start contacting faculty to see if they have like spots available in their labs and things like that. And then that is just kind of like putting your name out there that you're like interested in joining their lab and things like that while they're reviewing applications. So then um, after that, you might get invited to like a spring visit. If you're like out of the country, that might not be possible, but you'll definitely still get a chance to talk to the faculty a little more. And then um, whenever you get your final like offer letter, usually it comes from a direct match with a direct advisor. So I um, had rank the labs that I wanted to join, and then I got an offer letter from one of the lab those labs. But um, if you're wondering, you know, if you have like multiple labs in mind and things like that, I would definitely suggest you to email the faculty. Um, there's faculty in the BME website that is like primary faculty and there's also affiliate faculty. So I would look into everyone and see if you're interested in anything. Um, and then, yeah, the worst that can happen is that they don't answer and then, well, whatever. But if uh, they do answer, you can start having a conversation with them and getting to know what uh, the university is like and things like that. And then once you've talked to the faculty, another advice is to um, reach in out to the grad students in that lab to see how that lab works kind of like day to day. What is the expectations of the lab of you being like there in person or not and things like that. So, um, yeah. Great, thank you so much. That's good advice. Um, I am going to ask another uh, staff. Yes, Christine, I was going to call on you because I know your process is quite different. So, oh yeah, I was going to I was going to say just real quick um, to piggyback off some of that. So for us, when I offer you your admit letter, it's going to have your stipend in it. Um, stipend in it with whatever your faculty is going to pay. So ours will have that on there. If you're a McKnight bridge to doctorate, any of the other scholarships, that would be a separate funding letter. So yeah, it would come separate. But to say, please, please, please do not email our professors or faculty asking them if they're hiring, because I can tell you, they're going to just send it to me. They're not going to be happy that you've done that. If our faculty are hiring, they have access to every one of your applications. Therefore, if you have an area of interest that you're in and you see that this certain professor um, is over the class, put their name in your statement of purpose. That way they can see it when they go through, but they do have the opportunity to review each and every one of your applications. So here again, please do not email our faculty. Thank you. Hi, Krista. Do you mind if I chime in as well really quick? Absolutely. Go ahead. Thank you so much. Um, so I just wanted, I thought this was a good time to chime in because MAE, Mechanical Aerospace Engineering, has a very different process than what Christina just mentioned. So again, we want to note that each department has their own policies and processes are very different. Uh, and I've been seeing a lot of questions in the chat about research assistantships and how to apply. Um, and so for MAE, we do, we encourage you <laughs> to go ahead and reach out to our faculty members. It's quite different. Um, so again, for mechanical and aerospace engineering specifically, if you're applying for the PhD program, funding is required. Um, and to find a graduate research assistantship or fellowship, we strongly encourage that you visit our research areas page, um, check out what we're currently offering and then check out the faculty research matrix to see what areas our faculty are working in. You can view their profile and see the research that they're currently doing, some publications that they may have done recently, um, and then find their email contact there and go ahead and reach out to them. Ask about availability of funding in their lab. Um, talk about your goals, why you're interested in joining our program and what area of research that you want to work in. 
Um, and then ask maybe about a virtual meeting. That's usually the best way to start a conversation and evaluate a, a true potential for fit in that lab. So again, for MAE specifically, we do want you to go ahead and start reaching out to faculty members to secure funding. They won't be reaching out to you um, necessarily. That does sometimes happen, but for the most part, we want you to go ahead and reach out to the faculty members. If you haven't gotten a response yet, I recommend sending up a follow-up email. Um, I know they have a lot going on, and so sometimes it just takes a little bit of a nudge. So again, for MAE, please do reach out to our faculty for research assistantships. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I think the moral of that section, the key point there is to ask. If you're not sure um, about the department's process, if it's not clear to you their website, uh, we will have everyone's contact information at the end of the slide. So reach out to the department and ask them, should I reach out to faculty or, or not? And they will be happy to tell you their process, make that very clear. So for PhD students, um, we do have an admitted students visit. Um, I know many of you are international students, but this may apply to you if you are currently living in the US. Unfortunately, we can't um, provide travel from outside of the country to Gainesville. Um, but if you are an international student living in the United States currently, uh, we would be happy to invite you to visit campus. And those dates are right there at the top. Um, okay, moving on to the next section. We'll talk a little bit, of, generally speaking, what it's like to be um, a Gator grad engineer, I should have said there. Um, so one thing we do provide to our students in the college is um, a wealth of industry connections. And rather than um, going through each of these bullets, I think I'd rather call on some departments who um, have their own specific events and let them talk a little bit more about what they offer. Um, Paula, do you wanna talk about the SE Evening with Industry? Sure, um, our Evening with Industry event takes place in our spring and fall semester. So we do do it twice yearly. Uh, this year, we were planning to have it in October, but I had to reschedule to November because of the hurricane, but that's okay. We have um, usually over 100 employers that will attempt to event, attend this event, but we can't accommodate everyone. Um, so we've had to move to a larger location, and this has been happening over the few years. So we're very excited about that, and we welcome all students to come to our events. First year graduate students, even our undergrads come to this event and many volunteer as well to assist with the event and we couldn't do it without them. So that's one way to, you know, start talking with employers and getting internship opportunities very early on in your academic career. Perfect, thank you. Ade, do you wanna talk about the VME industry or Alumni Connect events? Yes, absolutely. Um, we actually just had that a few weeks ago. Um, and it's an opportunity for students to meet with industry partners as well as um, some of our alumni. We, we invite them um, to this event so that they can interact with our students and also give them information about possible um, opportunities that may be available either through internship or after, after graduation. Um, also, our current students have the opportunity to share their research. Uh, we have like a poster session where um, our current graduate students would have the opportunity to present their research and be able to again interact with um, industry partners as well as the alumni. Um, usually that event is in the fall. Um, we, we recently had that. So we'll be having another one uh, next fall. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. So not only do we have exclusive events, as you um, could see for individual departments, we also have campus-wide um, career fairs for our Career Connection Center. So there's a lot of opportunity to connect um, for potential jobs or internships, um, co-ops, that, that type of thing. Okay, next slide. Housing, so we've listed some on-campus and off-campus options here uh, with some links. You, All you really need to do is Google on-campus housing UF for graduate students or um, campus apartments 
UF and you will find more than enough information, but I'm going to have a couple grad students talk about where they live um, to give you an idea. Um, Vernon, would you like to talk about um, what you decided to choose for housing? Um, I've chosen off-campus housing um, because, I mean, I initially applied for on-campus, but it took a while. But off-campus is also flexible. It's not too far from campus. And uh, it's probably more economical. Yeah, you also uh, have the flexibility of choosing your roommates. They have uh, roommate matching options. So you're, they, they make sure that you're pretty comfortable with uh, the kind of roommates that you want. Uh, and you have uh, a lot of uh, supermarkets and um, grocery stores around. So you're not too... Um, Mm. Yeah, it's it's pretty uh good to have everything around in Gainesville. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Um, based on what I've heard, the on-campus housing is quite competitive to get into. So, if you are interested in that and um, definitely planning to attend UF, I would submit your application for that a sooner rather than later. Um, but if that doesn't end up working out, there are a lot of off-campus opportunities and a lot of networks with students to figure out um, what the best places are. They can provide you a lot of advice. Okay, next slide. Okay, what do people do at UF when we're not in the lab, not in the office, not studying, not in the classroom? Um, there's a lot of opportunities here with some um, category, student orgs, sports, um, nature. Um, Florida is a nature lover's paradise. So I will let some of the students and staff speak about this and let um, them speak to what they like to do um, outside of the lab. Um, Kaylee, do you want to talk about this? You were an UF undergrad, so you have a good perspective. Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to. Um, there is so much going on. And actually, this is one of the reasons that I love UF um, and really just feel at home here. There are so many fun things to do outside of school, which is really important for making sure that you have a work-life balance. Um, grad school is a really, really stressful time. And you know, there's a lot going on. You feel like you're super, super busy, um, but it's important for your mental and your physical health to make sure you are getting outside, going to do other things and taking a step outside of the lab or outside of your office area um, or the classroom. So um, there's tons of pictures here. You can see in the bottom left corner, I think, um, there's a photo of one of the natural springs. That's something my friends and I love to do. Um, there are tons of natural freshwater springs that you can hop in a tube and float down. Um, you can kayak through. And the really cool thing is you get to see manatees. A lot of them have wild manatees, like giant sea hippos, um, as I like to call them, that will live literally come up and bump under your kayak. It's really, really awesome. You know, there's a lot of very flat hiking trails, which is nice um, because it's a little bit less challenging to walk through them. Um, there are tons of clubs, activities, and one of the huge, like biggest things that is really instrumental to like the spirit of the Gator Nation is our sporting events. So I love going to football games. I am a season ticket holder. So getting into that swamp and watching these like American football games um, is so much fun. The energy in the stadium is so, so cool. And everybody's so excited to be there. And the same applies for the gymnastics meets I used to go to all the time. Um, bas basketball games are huge. There's just so many fun things. And the important thing to note is that even as a graduate student, you can still get involved in sports or intramural sports or sport clubs. So I am a tri-gator. I was on the UF tri-gators all through undergrad um, and it is the triathlon club. So we go and compete and do races and stuff like that. Um, so there's like a lot that you can get involved in to help you de-stress and decompress when you're struggling with things or, you know, just dealing with the stresses of grad school. 
Thank you. That's super important. Um, okay, next slide. I think we will kind of breeze through these in the interest of saving time. So as Kaylee mentioned, there's lots of things to do in Gainesville. I think some other people mentioned our proximity to bigger cities and bigger airports. So you can go to parts unknown across the states or internationally even. Um, lots of tourist opportunities in Orlando. We all know about those. Um, and the beaches, what Florida is known for. So we'll go ahead and skip to the next slide. And just to conclude, there's a lot of reasons why we think UF is great. Um, first and foremost, our research opportunities, but then everything else that everyone mentioned with the um, campus life, um, student involvement, Gainesville community and beyond. So we hope that you have learned a lot today and are interested in UF and are excited as about it as we are. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Krista. So we only have about 10 minutes here and we'll try to answer any remaining questions. So if our graduate staff can think of any questions they've answered today that we'd like to kind of reiterate here. But first I'd like to let, uh, we have two panelists that haven't got a chance to speak today. So uh, from chemical engineering, Shushangita, did I get that semi right? If you'd like to maybe reiterate on this slide, like why did you pick UF and anything else you'd like to say? Yeah, uh, I picked the UF for the research in semiconductor fabrication. The research here is really great. The professors are great too. They help you with anything that you require and help you build your resume and your profile too. So the semiconductor fab lab is very interesting here. You get to have a hands-on experience, which is similar in the industry. So getting an offer after completing your master's or a PhD in UF is really great. And you may step into the semiconductor industry easily. Uh, apart from semiconductor industry, you can also apply for other industries too. And there are other professors who research in pharmaceutical or drug development. That is great too. Well, that's the reason why pick UF over other universities, as well as the weather here is very pleasant. It's not too cold, not too hot. It's perfect. Okay, thank you so much. And Sinhura in computer science, you did not get a chance to talk. So why did you pick UF? And is there anything else you would like to tell these prospective students? Um, it's been a long-standing dream for me to join UF. Uh, I chose UF because of its uh, amazing uh, uh, course structure and the flexibility to choose from. And also the amazing faculties, like, you know, they have, like, you know, interesting research areas and they've done some amazing work. Uh, and also it has, like, some world-class facilities. So those were, like, you know, very impressive and made me want to choose UF. Okay, great. Thank you. So here's the contacts that Krista was referring to. Again, these slides are posted on the website. Um, every department has key graduate staff or two. You've heard from all of the ones that were online today. There's a few others that were not online, but they're included here as well as the very important F1 advisors for all of you international students in I-20 processing so that you can stay in touch. This was for the application fee waivers again. I know I tried to get on and answer a few questions today, but um, I wasn't able to answer as many while speaking. But these were those same links uh, for those. OK, so what we would like to do at this time, if there's any um, remaining questions. And so um, do some of the graduate staff, are there topics that you feel that we should hit here before this program ends? Mike, I'll chime in. There is a question yep. in the chat that I think would be relevant for, for the group. Um, okay, what is it? About, about the stipend amount of 32,000 and um, how that um, how far that goes in the town of Gainesville. And if um, anyone wants to speak, one of our graduate students, maybe Audrey, I don't know if you wanna comment on that. Yeah, I think that, um... 
Yes, you gotta like uh make some decisions. I think the if you're already planning on coming here, apply to the on campus housing because usually what happens is that the first year graduate students will live off campus until they get that on campus housing notice. Um, and then that brings down the housing cost a lot. Having roommates also brings down the housing cost a lot. So like currently I live in a house with two roommates and that's completely fine by me. And uh, yeah, like I can still have enough money to know to go to concerts and things like that and like, you know, have nice meals uh, and whatnot. So yeah, but I've heard that especially uh, people that come and bring their spouses with them, they uh, the on-campus housing really relieves some of the like housing cost a lot. So yeah, that's one of the things that I would say. Okay, thank you. Was there another graduate student that wanted to uh, on a stipend that wanted to talk about how far their money stretches? Um, maybe Krishna. Um. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh, with thirty two k, you will have to manage your finances pretty well. Like uh, Adriana said, you could choose housing where you're sharing your apartment, and for international students, if um, you're planning on getting a car or something like that, you might, uh, the finances might be a little stretched. So you might have to um, plan on financing your car or, or uh, getting a secondhand one. But um, Gainesville is a pretty cheap place to live. So 32K is, you can get by fine with 32K. Okay, good. Thank you. So two topics. One, uh, the car that was just mentioned. We do have free busing on campus and there are free city buses that go around town. So don't feel like you have to have a car. In fact, most international students do not have a car that are here. Some do um, because we provide that transportation for you. Secondly, uh, some of the discussion about the on-campus housing. So we have lots of residence halls on the University of Florida campus, 25 or 30 but the vast majority of them are for undergraduate students. So we have some for graduate students, but quite honestly, the very old, decades old. And so we've been going through a process of tearing some of those down. And then the goal long-term is to replace them with much more modern facilities. Now, this is not a quick process. This takes many years. So some of them have already been torn down, but the new ones have not been erected yet. So that makes us the crunch with on-campus housing actually a little tighter now, but there is uh, active plans with the university to um, subsidize some of the apartment complexes in town at the same rates of what those would have been from on-campus housing. I've seen quite a lot of a discussion of this in the last year. I'm not sure if we've got to the point where that's fully been erected, but that, that's kind of the plan for the future until all of those um, can, can be built. But most of our students do, do live off campus in the graduate room. Okay, was there any other topics? Krista, did you see or any other graduate staff? Uh, okay. Oh, oh, go ahead. I got one more. One um, more. A master's question. So if you receive the Academic Achievement Award, can you combine that with external scholarships or employment or any additional funding opportunity? So if you have some external awards, you can combine that with the $4,500 Academic Achievement Award, but it cannot be combined with any other University of Florida award. So let's say you're uh, trying to get a teaching assistantship or a research assistantship, you would always accept the Academic Achievement Award. You would start with that. And then if at any point you were able to get the higher level award, then we would swap that out in place of it. Because of course, we would want you to have the highest award possible, but you cannot have both of those because the Research and Teaching Assistant Award waives your tuition and gives you a stipend. So you wouldn't get the other much smaller amount on top of it. Okay, now I'm gonna give our graduate student panelists, if any of you wanted to give uh, a last comment or words of wisdom or advice for the prospects. So I'll open this up. Does anybody want to have a closing remark for the graduate students? Adriana, I, I see your Sorry. hand. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Kaylee. Sorry, I didn't know we were raising hands. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it, um, anyway works. 
Yeah, no, I just wanted to jump in here and say that applying to grad school is a very overwhelming and stressful process. Um, I am not an international student, so I cannot imagine how much more stressful it is coming from another country. And, uh, you know, I think I just wanted to say that UF is a really, really special place. Um, it is a place that is going to support you. It is a place that is going to support you in your educational and professional career. It is really a place where I felt that everybody, all the faculty and staff that I've interacted with are invested in my education and my future. And that is not the case everywhere else. Um, so go Gators. And if you have any questions, you guys should have our emails from the slide deck. Feel free to reach out to any of us. Great. Thank you, Kaylee. Adriana? Yes, I want to say that um, I am an international student and apply and had to get the whole like F1 visa, things like that. I cannot say how many times I contacted the International Center and they were super helpful with the whole like visa process. So that was really nice. Uh, take it one step at a time and just make sure that you're doing the right thing and just little by little, it'll it'll work out. And the other thing is that if you're decided on coming to here, I would definitely encourage you to join uh, one of the orgs you can find. If you just Google UF like student orgs, um, then you can look at all of the ones that are here because there's sports, there's hobbies like anything and that's one of the things that I don't have a car so for example for me going to the springs and things like that was not a realistic option but the orgs organize a lot of events so they can take you to the springs they organize trips to the beach and things like that so if you're definitely like set on common here that's one of the things I would say to do and good luck Great, thank you we have time for one more graduate student is there one more that would like to have some closing comments Okay, um, I will default to Krista then. Krista, if you'd like to have a brief closing comment and then I will do the same. Sure. Um, I think my greatest advice would be, I know we've said it and I sound like a broken record, but contact your department's graduate admission staff if you have questions about their individual processes. Uh, make sure you look at their website. You can reach out to myself. You can reach out to Mike. Um, our contact information is listed too. We are happy to answer whatever we can for you. Um, we want to make this as painless and smooth a process as possible, even though we know that um, it's probably not going to be 100% that way, but we are here to help. So please reach out. Okay, thank you so much. So with that, it's time to close. We have gone the full 90 minutes as promised. I'm sure we could go longer, but we all have other things to move on to for today. So again, I'd like to thank you all for your very sincere interest in considering University of Florida for our master's and PhD programs. Some of you have already applied. Some of you are deciding if you should apply. And I hope you'll agree after today that all of us, all 20 of us online today have reciprocated with that exact same sincere amount of interest in you. And so we brought our best foot forward today and that will continue from now all the way through the start of the spring term or the next fall term. You now have at least 20 individuals that are direct contacts that you can reach out to and we'll be very happy to stay in touch. So again, thanks for your time and interest, and we will be in touch um, with you in the future. Bye, everybody. Bye. Go Gators. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.